Yeti has launched the new SB120. As the name suggests, it's a 120mm travel trail bike and features a revised Switch Infinity suspension link recently seen on the new Yeti SB160. I've ridden the bike, so stick around for some ride impressions later on. If you've been watching the channel in recent years, it won't surprise you to hear that the geometry is longer and slacker. Though similar in frame travel to the outgoing SB115, this bike isn't designed for XC or downcountry adventures. Before I run you through all the key details, why not subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the latest tech. I'll begin by talking about that revised geometry. Yeti recognised that in recent years, bikes have been growing and slackening. Their SB115, with a frame borrowed from the SB100, but lengthened in travel, was fairly short in its reach when it was launched in 2020. The brand says their engineers have been focused on giving their bikes a more balanced ride, both via the geometry and by giving the front of the bike more travel than the rear. Slacker head angles naturally drop the front end for a given fork length and so extra travel can be added up front to improve the bike's balance. Reach figures have grown when compared to the SB115. A size large SB120 has a 475mm reach, while the equivalent SB115 had a 450 reach. Yet he says this improves the bike's agility thanks to riders having a more neutral position on the bike, which better weights both wheels. Yeti are also altering both the seat tube angle and the chainstay length, depending on the size of the bike. Seat tubes get steeper on larger bikes, with Yeti claiming that this makes the transition from seated to standing easier for taller riders. Seat tube angles range from 71.1 degrees to 73.2 degrees. However, the effective seat tube angle, that's the angle from the BB to the center of the saddle rails rather than the physical tube, is a constant 76.5 degrees. The steeper seat tube angle is therefore accounting for the additional saddle height a taller rider will have. The chainstay lengths increase with bike size too, ranging from 433mm to 443mm. Yeti says this has been done to maintain proportionality of geometry across bike sizes. Yeti are offering six sizes of bike, from extra small to double extra large. The other major change for the SB120 is with the suspension, as Yeti has tweaked the design of their Switch Infinity suspension link. Built for Yeti by Fox, the system works by placing the rear pivot on a shuttle, which rides on Kashima coated stanchions, that moves up and then down through the bike's suspension compression. Yeti's belief is that this separates the anti-squat, the force that counteracts pedal bob, from the shock's leverage curve, leading to an efficient pedaling bike with few of the associated downsides of hard suspension or pedal kickback. Yeti has given the SB120 an 11% progression rate, with the leverage rates going from 2.84 at the start of its travel to 2.52 at the end. Yeti also says that they've custom tuned each shock to the bike in-house. Other than the new shape and revisions to the Switch Infinity, there are more subtle changes to the bike, echoed by the recently launched SB160. These are small changes, so I'm going to run through them as quick hitters. Firstly, there's a less pronounced belly kink at the bottom of the bike, meaning better ground clearance, while chainstays sit a touch higher from the ground. Secondly, the Switch Infinity Link and shock are held tighter in the frame, meaning there's more room for a bottle, and the seat tube is shorter while still allowing longer drop droppers. Overall frame stiffness has been increased without compromising compliance according to Yeti, while tyre clearance is also improved. Next up is that the linkage which drives the shock has been reworked. It's more compact to help reduce overall frame standover heights, while it's also stiffer. Finally, standard size Enduro Max bearings are held in the linkage rather than in the front or rear carbon triangles. These are held securely by floating collar axles. Yet he says this system reduces tolerance gaps to virtually zero while ensuring the assembly remains tight. When it comes to the bike's finishing touches, they're all well considered. Cables are routed through internal tubes in the rear portion of the bike, while clamped stops at the head tube and by the BB ensure internal cable rattles are minimized. The down tube protection is a two-piece item. It's as wide as the frame's carbon tube and has an inner rubberized layer and an outer hard plastic layer that can be replaced. This protection can be removed too to aid home mechanics with cable installation. There's a threaded bottom bracket shell and ISC G05 mounts. These alloy inserts are co-molded into the frame rather than bonded in during the frame's layup. SRAM's UDH hanger is included, so replacements should be available at virtually any bike shop. 
five models will be available, as well as a $4,300 frame only option. Three builds will feature the top spec high modulus Turk series carbon, while there will be two C series frames. All bikes will come with Fox 34 forks with 130mm of travel and float DPS shocks. They all come with four piston brakes and 180mm rotors front and rear. The range topping model is specced with a Fox factory shock, SRAM XX1 access and SRAM level ultimate brakes and costs $12,100. The cheapest full build is a C2 costing $6,300. For that money the bike is specced with a Fox performance shock and Shimano SLX for both drivetrain and brakes. Let's move on to how the bike rides. I took the SB120 T1 out for a spin in the Quantock Hills in the southwest of the UK ahead of the bike's launch. My initial impressions are based upon that one ride. However, I have the bike at Bike Crowder HQ ready for a full review in the coming weeks. First thing I noticed climbing out of the car park was just how stable the rear suspension is. Looking down at the linkage from the saddle, it's almost static, suggesting that the anti-squat figure is relatively high. This resulted in an incredibly efficient feeling bike on smooth and lumpy climbs. Despite virtually no rear wheel travel, traction didn't feel overly compromised. Steps, rocks and roots could be felt through the saddle, but their edge was muted and the rear aggressor tyre did a good job of maintaining grip. It's also a moderately fast rolling tyre without too much rumble on tarmac. When the trail flattened, the suspension started to move under pedalling loads, similar to what you might expect from a regular full suspension bike. I believe this is due to the change in the location of my centre of mass over the bike as the pitch of the trail changes. This then influences the anti-squat kinematics. Despite a little more bobbing on the flat, I never felt the need to flick the shock's lockout lever, even under harder efforts. On descents, the longer and slacker geometry certainly seemed to give the bike more stability and confidence than the SB115 I rode back in 2020. It feels like there's tons of mid-stroke support in the suspension. Pushing heels to the ground in corners lets the bike rip round natural curves, while there's ample platform to rebound off and pop over trail features. The suspension, on initial impressions at least, doesn't isolate you from the ground. There's plenty of trail feedback, so if you want a cloud smooth ride, you might want to look at longer travel options. Likewise, on really chunky trails, the rear wheel's limited travel is prone to catching on square edges. However, if you're looking for a mile munching yet still fun to ride and ultimately pretty capable trail bike, the SB120 should be considered. Keep an eye on BikeRider.com in the coming month for a full review though, after I've taken the bike on my regular test loops. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a full video review and leave your thoughts on the Yeti SB120 below. Give this video a thumbs up and if you're looking for even more mountain bike tech, then why not check out this video.